Alright, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tokenizer, and I'm here to bring you guys in-depth news, analysis, and insights from the digital asset space, along with covering the progressive tokenization of the world. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out tokenizer.network for all my other content platforms linked in one spot. From my Twitter threads, to Medium articles, Spotify podcasts, and much, much more. And of course, I'll be right down in the description below as usual. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into Morpheus Network and all the connections they've done with supply chain digitalization through their middleware technology, in addition to some connections we've found between them and some other global standard setting bodies around the world. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember when we first looked into Morpheus Network back in March of this year. And while let's say it's been quite an unexpected ride, especially through this bear market seeing the price action. Though, of course, price doesn't always tell the full story. So we'll be going more in depth in this deep dive than our introduction covering all things about their partnerships, operations, connections, etc. So if you haven't already familiarized yourself with the basics of Morpheus Network, I do suggest you guys checking out the introduction which is linked above just right here, just so that everything makes much more sense, as we'll be going fairly detailed in this deep dive. And as usual, before we get started, I just got to remind everyone real quick that I'm not a financial advisor and therefore nothing you ever hear or read from me should be taken as any form of financial or investment advice. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get right into it. So we've previously discussed what Morpheus Network is and what they do pretty generally. We know they're a supply chain middleware solution that's built for both legacy modules that's seen in the current world of supply chain, in addition to all the DLT solutions that are being built in the blockchain space. In other words, they're an agnostic form of technology. And this is great, because this is probably what will drive actual industry adoption. Since large corporations and enterprises aren't going to want to scrap the software and technological infrastructure that they've spent billions of dollars over the last decade or so building up, they're likely going to want to add blockchain technology into their existing frameworks. They'll likely want to add blockchain technology into their existing frameworks instead. Hence why I'm so fond of projects that have legacy to DLT interoperability, such as Quant, Constellation, Morpheus Network, and quite a few others. And this platform that's bridging the legacy and future of supply chain together is titled Morpheus Black Platform. I know, probably not the coolest name, but definitely some really cool use cases to it. So let's dive right in and take a look at what Morpheus Black can provide for their clients. So while being an agnostic middleware is great for enterprise adoption and all, there needs to be actually use cases on the platform. And so we've discussed some of the basic things such as automation of procedures through the continuous scanning of QR codes, radio frequency identifications, aka RFIDs. The TLDR of the Morpheus Black platform is that they take the data within supply chains and create a digital twin of the entire supply chain procedure up until it hits its destination. And so this ranges from a variety of things, from integrating different data sources in supply chain modules and enterprise resource planning softwares, to an integration with Swift International Wire for transacting in anyone's preferred local currency through connecting over 1600 banks together. All the way to analytics and real-time updates on the condition and delays on ports and weather for route planning. One other subsector within the supply chain industry is the issues with counterfeit items. It's estimated that the black market on counterfeits or fake goods is over a trillion dollars at this point. And that's an absolutely massive market. I mean, even the automotive industry isn't that large. And of course, with everything that's happening with blockchain and DLT, that can easily be fixed thanks to the immutable and verifiable nature of blockchains. And of course, Morpheus Network plans to play a part in tackling this global issue which they've been accelerated doing so by collaborating with SAP to certify their fraud prevention protocol, in addition to already being added to their startup ecosystem. So just like 99% of other blockchain networks, they also have a software tool development kit for developers to build additional applications and modules on their platform. And this software development kit has already been seeing usage in Argentina for their partnership with Sinasa, but we'll save some of these connections for later. One way you can think of this is like in Apple App Store or Google Play Store on Morpheus 
Black's platform, with various custom modules built by developers at all levels, and of course they'll be incentivized with rewards for helping build and add more applications onto the Morpheus network. This really helps with creating an ecosystem in a fair and self-sustaining way that allows everyone to benefit from the platform, whether you're a logistics company, a product manufacturer, or just someone who wants to build some application that'll ensure you can track and receive your packages more efficiently. On the security end of things, there's also some pretty standard and well-accustomed integratable security features like two-factor authentication. If you've been in crypto for a while now, I'm sure you've heard about this. In short, it's pretty much an extra layer of security and identification. So for example, with 2FA, let's say you try logging into your email from a random computer. 2FA would make it so beyond having the account credentials like the username and password, you're going to need to provide one more piece of evidence. So usually that results in you having to verify from another device that's already logged into that email. So probably your phone. It's basically like when you walk into a bar and need to present two pieces of ID for additional verification beyond the first one. They also allow you to take control of your own data through exporting it in a CSV format into other systems such as Microsoft Power BI, which is a data visualization platform. Next up, let's talk about digital footprints, which works hand in hand with the digital twin of the supply chain they create and helps keep data provenance of every step of a product's journey through things like IoT sensors, geolocations, and some other quality assurance analytics like humidity and temperature of something, say, certain meats or medications that need to be stored in a certain environment. Shock sensors for specific products. So say some items need to be placed carefully like a glass door, for example. This provides a ton of other use cases, like integrating certain certificates after being verified for things like truly organic foods, following proper trade and supply chain standards, loyalty rewards, or other special discounts. Now, the question is, why did the team at Morpheus Network decide to build in blockchain? Was it just because of all the hype and buzzwords brewing around here, or did they really see something innovative with blockchain that they could bring to the supply chain industry? Well, I think it's likely that Morpheus Network had noticed all of the talks about blockchain and the uses of DLT from its immutability to the automation ability of smart contracts and much like many companies, they realized this could be a perfect supply chain solution. But with their team's experience in the industry, they probably also realized that these large companies aren't going to want to just rebuild their entire infrastructure on blockchains. So the best solution for that was, of course, to build a platform that interoperates with both legacy modules that the supply chain industry has grown so accustomed to over these years, and even expanding on that idea to connect other siloed parts of the sector together, and really overall just being that glue in the middle tying everything together the way it should be. And to add to that, this isn't the only middleware solution in supply chain. It has been something that's been done before, but much like Quant's Overledger being another operating system, one of the key features that sets it apart is that they bridge together everything we've built in pre-existing systems to the future technology that we're seeing unravel. They realize that even with blockchain and DLT coming to mass adoption, there's still the question of what blockchain each supply chain company will use, and it's very unlikely everyone in that industry will be using one single chain. Some might want to use Hyperledger, some might want to use Corda, or maybe some even might want to use Ethereum Enterprise clients. So not only are they blockchain agnostic, they're what I'd like to call tech agnostic, with the fact that they're integrated on some of the largest cloud systems like Google Cloud, Azure, and AWS. This enables even further flexibility for their clients to not only choose what blockchain platform, but even what cloud service provider. Another technology that's seen an absolute skyrocket in growth over the past few years. Alright, but now that we have a pretty good understanding of what the Morpheus Black platform does overall, and why it has the potential to be a very seamless solution for their respective industry moving forward, let's take a look at some of their team members before we draw further connections out. So we've gone over a couple of these members in the breakdown already, but that was more of an overview, so let's see what we can really dig up when we take a deep dive. As usual, we'll start off with the CEO, and this is Dan Weinberger. And as I said, we did talk a fair bit about Dan in the breakdown, but just to review, he began at Stronghold Equipments. This is a Canadian-based company in Ontario that manages industrial assets along with imports and exports, 
And he was doing a variety of things there, from marketing plans, management, administration, SEO, so search engine optimization, designing, PR strategies, and the list goes on. He was there for a good 11 years, so he definitely picked up some experience within the supply chain industry while also really expanding out his network to other key members within their operations. Then in 2017, he began his startup Morpheus Network. And shortly after, he also took on the roles as an advisor in the AI program at George Brown College, along with joining as a committee member, which actually ranked 8th in research income across all other Canadian research institutions and colleges. During the same time, he also took on the role as a committee member to the International Supply Chain Education Alliance. This was the alliance that also gives out the Patak Prize that Morpheus Network had won with their client's federated co-op, which we covered in the introduction. The ISCA is kind of what it sounds like. It's a supply chain alliance. They operate in 73 different countries, and they've developed some of the most recognized supply chain certificates and awards, such as certificates for supply chain management, supply chain analysts, demand driver planners, and they're the global governing body for the Patak Prizes. They were actually the first ever global organization to certify supply chain professionals, starting way back when they were first established in 2003. Today, they've got 20 different certifications just on their website alone, in addition to multiple courses. The ISCEA also has another organization within them that's titled the IISB, or the ISCEA International Standards Board, which works with public and private organizations to work on building supply chain standards, so like government and trade organizations on supply chain initiatives. And while they don't exactly list who and what these organizations and initiatives they're working on, I would imagine these are likely ones like the United Nations, ISO, the World Trade Organization, and some more, as these are likely the ones that will really be setting standards for something as robust as the global supply chain. And so the only way you can get into the IISB is by an invite, which is likely reserved for people that they think have the right experience and forward way of thinking in this group to set industry standards. And of course, I wouldn't be talking about this organization unless Dan was one of their 38 members in the executive member seats. This is likely where Dan was able to largely build up his network and knowledge with supply chain on a really global scale. He's also a member and speaker within some UN conferences, and most recently, actually, he was a masterclass instructor at the United Nations ESCAP, so United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. And the topic he was discussing was about paperless trading. We'll be mentioning the UN some more as a whole, as we dive into their connections, but I just want to point out this little recent highlight of Dan further connecting with the United Nations. Next up, let's look at Roger Crook. So we know he was previously the CEO of DHL, which is already big enough in itself, and of course, very applicable experience to what Morpheus Network is building, being that DHL is actually the largest international logistics company in the world, operating in over 220 different countries. So they're right up there with the big names of like FedEx and UPS. And he was there for a good 13 and a half years. So he definitely built up quite a network around the supply chain industry of probably some very key players. But he actually started off as chief operating officer for DHL back in 2002, where he was in charge for managing their new supply chain solution for startups where he'd connect with other Fortune 500 companies to build and offer better supply chain solutions. Then, as CEO, he was responsible for many things, but beyond that, he also held a bunch of other sub-positions that all play a core role in the industry, while probably giving him all that much more valuable experience. So from 2005 to 2009, he was in charge for the Express International Americas line. Then, after 2009, up until 2010, while he was still CEO, he was also spearheading the global head of sales. Then a short seven months as head of the Express Asia Pacific, Middle Eastern, and African regions. Then to finish off his dual roles at DHL, he spent four years in global forwarding and freight, and of course, doing all this while being CEO. Since then, he's joined and started up a bunch of smaller logistics-related enterprises, with most of these where he had held an advisor role, but... I think the main ones we should highlight and really pay attention to are the ones he's still holding, 
Well, at least according to LinkedIn, he's still currently holding these other positions. So beyond joining as an advisor to Morpheus Network before moving up to their team lead for logistics, Roger also holds the role as an advisor for Empower Life, which is a German-based company that's focused largely on distributing power supply, especially in less fortunate parts of the world where the infrastructure for the energy grid isn't quite as developed. And ironically, this sounds a lot more like a work experience that someone from the energy web team would have, which is actually the project we looked into just most recently, as I had recently dropped a introduction on the energy web ecosystem. So if you guys are interested in that, I'll be sure to link that right up here and you guys can take a look into our introduction to energy web before we give it a deep dive soon. It's a really interesting project and I think it's really unique with the initiative and vision they're building. But anyways, back to Morpheus Network. So a lot of what Empower is building is largely around the adoption of solar energy within less developed countries, where there may not be the knowledge or resources and money available for them to join in this transition. And this is where Empower comes in, and through crowdfunding they take care of the costs through other investors, and ensures everything operates as seamlessly as possible up until the point the solar panels are fully installed. This means getting procurements and data provenance on the investments, the delivery of the panels, installations, and even maintenance. And just another plus to Empower is that they do directly align with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And I know there's probably a lot of people that probably aren't a big fan of supporting these big standard setting bodies initiatives like the World Economic Forum, United Nations, etc. But I just wanted to remind you guys that while this isn't any form of financial advice as stated earlier, are you here to pick projects that align with your personal beliefs or are you here to make money to build a better future for yourself and your family? So I'd argue that while Empower probably isn't quite as large scale as Roger's time at DHL, there's potentially some very valuable connections around the world that could definitely find some use cases for connecting to the rest of the supply chain grid more seamlessly through Morpheus Network. He also held a strategic advisor role at Stork Express. This is a platform that connects e-commerce, corporations, and individuals all together, and they actually leverage some components of AI and machine learning to create an optimized ecosystem of a delivery market. Currently, they have over 3,200 delivery employees, or well, what they actually refer to as storks, with over 12,000 members. So again, while not a super massive company, definitely one that's operating and building an ecosystem that can boost economic value. And well, if we kind of read through the operations of this project, doesn't a lot of this sound quite similar to Morpheus Network, where Stork is a platform connecting the kind of whole e-commerce side of merchants, businesses, and individuals while leveraging AI and machine learning, whereas Morpheus Network is connecting everything within the supply chain industry to DLT, while much like Stork Express, leveraging the technologies of AI and machine learning along with IoT to really build innovative solutions for the supply chain industry. There's also Postcard PTE and Aurora, which are also quite similar in being a platform leveraging innovative technologies to further connect and understand supply chain analytics better, which he has served as chairman and advisor for respectfully. So we'll just leave those two positions out there for anti-redundancy purposes. As for some of the larger positions, he's also the co-founder of Actavis Stars. And this is a fairly interesting position because Actava Stars is what you could consider like another business advisory or consulting firm operating globally. They specialize in operations like business development, planning strategies, and allocating human capital. And the cool thing about a company like this is that since they're more overall business advisory, they're not exactly locked into a specific sector, but more so the world of business overall. And of course, that's an absolutely massive world. So some of the companies that they're working with include various other startups that Rogers joined, either as an advisor or an investor. Some of these include Bico, Botsync, Aurora, Stork Express, Change Finance, and Morpheus Network. So this could open countless doors to other potential collaborations and integrations to Morpheus with these startups depending on where they are with the respective roadmaps. During the start of the pandemic in March 2020, Roger also picked up an operating advisor role for Partners Group, which as far as I know he still holds to this day. 
This is a Swiss-based private equity company with over $120 billion in assets under management. They manage portfolios for funds ranging from long-term pension funds, insurance companies, banks, family offices, asset managers, and more. They have over 800 institutional clients in addition to actually having IPO'd on the 6 Swiss stock exchange back in 2006. And yes, this is the same 6 that we mentioned when talking about Quant's connections to their 6 digital exchange or SDX. So this position likely not only gave Roger some very high level experience in the private equity world, which is one of the largest markets in the world after all, but it definitely also gave him a lot of connections to the industry of banking and investing as a whole, which does have some overlap with Morpheus Network's operations. In June of 2021, he also began his role as a strategic advisor to Bain & Company. This is one of the largest consultancy companies in the world, operating in over 35 countries with connections to the World Economic Forum and Bosch. So of course those are some pretty high level connections there, right? And then most recently in January of this past year, Roger actually also took on the role as an advisor and an investor for CLAP. This is a rather interesting earlier stage startup based out of Latin America. It appears to be a mobile application that's focused on the whole influencer and sponsoring products idea that's been trending around social platforms like Instagram and TikTok for some time now. The primary pitch of their project is that it's a platform to enable small businesses to offer their products to social influencers and content creators in exchange for exposure and helping get their name out there on social media while also having many large name brand products and services that these content creators can access directly from their application. This is probably one of the smaller positions Roger holds relative to everything else he's doing, but I kind of wanted to highlight this because I thought overall this was a pretty cool concept in the whole microservices and really exchanging things of semi-fungible value, where there's a form of equivalent exchange almost in a barter sense though. And while at the end of the day, there's still going to be a bit of a need for supply chains for an application like this, as part of their business model is to actually ship and provide these products to those content creators giving exposure to smaller companies, right? Well, Roger has all the right connections for that, from DHL to the plethora of supply chain and logistic firms he's working with, like Morpheus Network, which I'm sure could potentially integrate the CLAP logistics module into their platform too. Next up, we'll talk a little more on Noam Eppel. He's the co-founder and chief operating officer for Morpheus Network. Prior to his time at Morpheus Network, he was at a bunch of small and medium enterprises in addition to a few startups of his own. Some of the more notable positions include nearly five years at Colab as a senior web developer, which is basically a firm that focuses on web development for socio-economical and ecological impacts. They build with some of the largest academias such as Virginia Tech, Stanford, and Cornell, in addition to working with some other alliances, like the International Cooperative Alliance for funding and financing for co-op startups. They operate pretty globally with offices and operations around Canada, the States, South America, Europe, Australia, India, China, and Japan. In between this time, he was also building one of his own startups called Clean Forest Solutions, which is a website management company based in Toronto and Taiwan. They offer a variety of things in the website management realm, from things like mobile development, road mapping, blockchain dApps, data migration, search engine optimization, marketing, and much more. And while funny enough, when we go to their portfolio of recent work, in the world of design, the term portfolio usually refers to a gallery of your best work, which is exactly what they've shown here. And what do we see? The exact layout for Morpheus Network's website. Which makes sense, as no one probably figured the best way to get that done was to, was to do so with his experience and connections there. Beyond this, we can see there's countless other very clean layouts for other enterprise websites. Now one interesting thing I found on their page is that they have this one section where it's just a testimonial of other companies that have worked with them and sharing their experiences. And well, a couple of these clients beyond Morpheus Network are rather fascinating. So here at the bottom of their page, we see them list a couple of the companies they've worked with. And we can see a hospital, an enterprise initiative to protect the ocean. And here we also see the Bank of Montreal. This is one of the biggest seven commercial banks we have in Canada. 
So having worked with them previously is quite massive, in addition to the fact that Morpheus Network has so much in their operations related to connecting correspondent banking networks. Then there's also this testimonial here, which comes from Rob Hunter. This guy has been the senior wealth advisor to the National Bank of Canada for nearly 21 years now. He basically said that No Meppel had been managing the wealth management site for National Bank of Canada for multiple years without any stress on their end whatsoever. So keeping a positive relationship with someone of that level is pretty huge. And who knows, maybe they'd in return offer some of their banking services to help build Morpheus Network out on that end. Now this isn't to be mistaken with the Bank of Canada that we previously discussed in the Quant Deep Dive. I know it's kind of ironic and confusing that a commercial bank with that name could be called something like that. If you're calling something the National Bank of Canada, you would assume that is probably a central bank, right? But that's kind of what we gotta deal with up here in the north. But even though it's not a central bank, this is the sixth largest commercial bank in the country. And then much like Dan, Noam also holds his position at George Brown College, though he's actually an adjunct professor for artificial intelligence. So same department and program as Dan really, just a different position. And the last thing we'll cover about Noam until the connections page will be his role as managing director at the Crypto Defenders Alliance. This is actually a super interesting initiative. The goal is kind of what the name sounds like it'd be. Cybersecurity for the crypto industry. So the focus on working with exchanges, blockchain projects and cybersecurity firms to prevent things like exchange hacks, on-chain providers that want to block thieves from their funds, and blockchain projects that want to prevent things like fraud and theft. And so he's been at that for about four years now since October 2018. There's not a ton of other information I could really dig up on this initiative, but it appears to be an open source project that anyone can really join. Now before moving on to connections, Let's just go over two of their key advisors real quick. So first up, there's Cal Alley. He's their lead partnership advisor. And this one's fairly interesting as he was also a strategic advisor to Orion Protocol, an exchange aggregator. And as we look a little deeper, it also shows on multiple sources such as Masari and his personal blogs. And yeah, I know these probably aren't the most credible sources, but we're working with what we have here. It says he's also collaborated with Quant, Holochain, and Morpheus Network. And this is really fascinating. As many of you guys know, Quant's probably the project I've spent the most amount of time researching and plugging in all these connections to. And while I've literally never heard this guy's name being brought up or mentioned in any of the thousands of hours I've spent researching Quant. So I decided to dig a little deeper and found out Cal also has a Medium page where he actually posted about this bounty program for Quant in 2018, which was collaborated with one of the projects he was working on at the time called 0x Bounty, which I think is something revolving around where if users have an amount of their ecosystem's token, they can participate in bug bounties that 0x Bounty has agreed to host one for. But yeah, I thought that was rather interesting to have that connection there. And while it might seem rather small scale, if we look into the Orion side of this and go on their page, they actually have this very interesting part where they highlight some of the Fortune 500s they've worked and discussed with, such as Microsoft, Accenture, and Telefonica. Then down here, we see they're talking about blockchain companies they've worked with, and they mention Quant and Morpheus Network. Now I found this to be especially interesting, as all those Fortune 500s that mention them all have connections to both Quant and Morpheus. Nexi Group, which is the name of the company after Sia had merged with Nexi, one of Quant's core partners, that's the largest infrastructure for Europe's payment railways, had recently partnered with Microsoft for digitalization. In addition to Microsoft being mentioned in some previous SATP drafts. And then on Morpheus Network's end, we know they have a plugged in module to Microsoft Dynamics for enterprise resource planning, in addition to Microsoft Power BI for visualizing data analytics. And then with Telefonica, we've talked about Quant's connections to Meta and largely through Telefonica's Trust OS, sounding so much like a white label to Overledger OS, and their correspondent partnerships in Lackchain, Elastria, and Oracle. 
but that's a whole other rabbit hole that I'm about to open up. So instead, I'll just link the Tea Time episode where we did an in-depth coverage of that, and the whole connection thread right up here. And Morpheus has an actual partnership with Telefonica actually, for tech services like IoT. Then Accenture, Quant's been in works behind the scenes in certain initiatives and consortiums with Accenture for quite some time now, such as their work together with the Digital Pound Foundation. Morpheus Network is also a member in one of Accenture's supply chain innovation labs, along with IBM. Kind of had some ties with both Quant and Morpheus Network. But as you guys can see, there's some form of connections between all of these players, and to really sum it up, these guys all also happen to be members of Inapba which both Quant CEO Gilbert Verdian and Dan Weinberger are both co-chairs of for standardization and supply chains respectively. All right, well, we might've gotten a little too excited there and gone carried away and spilt a little bit of some interesting connections alpha. But before we officially move on to the connections, let's look at Sebastian Spitzer. He's the advisor for mobility and IoT for Morpheus Network, and much like Cal, Sebastian also has some pretty relevant connections to some projects we regularly discuss around here. So in April of 2018, he actually took on the role as an advisor to Constellation Network. And he actually played a pretty big role there in landing them that collaboration with Moby to where him and Benjamin Diggles got to co-author on a paper for a connected data mobility marketplace with guys like Ford and Honda. Since then, he's actually also branched out further into the Constellation ecosystem, where he now also serves as an advisor to some of their other projects like Genico, OBS ERP, and Punchline. So seeing this is pretty awesome, as we're pretty big fans of the Hypergraph here, and Sebastian really seems to be enjoying his time working within that ecosystem. So during pretty much the exact same time he took on the role as an advisor for Constellation, he also took on the role as advisor for Morpheus Network, and it's really interesting to see someone in the IoT and mobility space take on the role as an advisor for two blockchain projects in arguably the same or very, very similar timeframes. Now, he's also an investment manager and advisor to DuckDAO, which deals with earlier stage Web3 ventures, or in other words, it's an incubator where he's focused on sourcing out deals, evaluating projects, deal negotiations, and more. They've got some pretty interesting utility projects in their ecosystem, such as Geek, DIA, Paid Network, and a couple others. Now his full-time position is actually at Schaffler Group. This is a German manufacturer for a variety of mobility things, ranging from automotives, aerospace, and industrial use cases. They publicly listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange back in 2015 and have a market cap of about $1 billion. So Sebastian is the digital innovations manager for Schaffler, where he's responsible for things like aftermarket mobility, data services, startup ecosystems, scaling a digital business to business supply chain, and managing their digital startup ecosystem. All right, but that's about it for what we'll be covering on the team members. Of course, they've got some other people working within their ecosystem for a variety of other initiatives ranging from more traditional things like business and product development along with legal counsel. But they also have a director of medical solutions, which really isn't something we see in any blockchain based startup. But with Morpheus Network's operations in the supply chain space, I'd argue this is actually a big benefit towards them and has the potential to open countless other doors in that sector. But now, officially onto connections. As you guys have already realized, many of the connections have spilt over into some of the other sections we were discussing, but let's dive a little deeper into these before we go over the MNW token. We talked about Dan and his work within the United Nations, and most notably, some of his recent work with the UN ESCAP in actually being a masterclass instructor. But it's no longer just Dan connected to the United Nations anymore. So in this document here with the United Nations database for cross-border paperless trade, now before we really get into the details of this rabbit hole, I want to quickly highlight the wording of this database, cross-border paperless trade. Now this is something that's been in discussion or for a while now, especially within standard setting bodies like the United Nations. In fact, they actually have a standard for this, that one of their agencies, UN Citral, or United Nations Commission on International Trade Law, helped create with some other standard setting bodies, titled Model Law on Electronic Transfer Records, or MLETR for short. And it's basically the standard to have trade documents and receipts be able to be accepted in digital format rather than ink and paper. Because believe it or not, 
even in today's day and age, countries are required by law to have these documents in physical form before they can officially execute trades like imports and exports to another country, which I mean is pretty ridiculous. This law was implemented in the 1800s and well, it's hard to even put into words how much has changed since then. If you guys are curious on the standard, a good research partner of mine, Citizens of the Future, has made tons of high quality research on it, which the XDC ecosystem has tons of connections to. For anyone interested in learning more on this supply chain and trade finance initiative, I'll be sure to link Citizens channel right down below for some of the highest quality content you can find on YouTube about that. So as we keep looking, we also see the ICC's Digital Standards Initiative there. This is the International Chamber of Commerce, and they're one of the largest consortiums in the world with over 45 million members. And so they're one of the parties that the United Nations had collaborated with for MLETR on. So this is a standard that two standard setting bodies with millions of connections have formed together. Seeing Morpheus Network put into the database for this initiative is probably one of the best signs we've seen for this project as a whole. The body of the document basically talks about all the procedures of their platform and how it fundamentally works. Of course we covered this in pretty deep detail over the start of the video so I'll save you guys some redundancy. Though some of these sections are actually quite interesting as in part 13 they mention that things they've learned from the project include that many border delays are due to issues with compliance which Morpheus Network was actually able to alleviate. In the benefits section they mention that the platform enables for things like enhanced compliance which is likely massive to a standard setting body like the United Nations in addition to simplifying and saving time on traditional operations. And as for future plans, they highlight deeper integrations into providers within the industry, along with wider coverage across Asia and Europe, and then a little hint on further IoT advancements. As we know, Morpheus Network has already been working on these things, and just based on this document, it seems like what Morpheus's Black Platform is doing should be checking all of the United Nations boxes on this standard. From customs or to customs, so, and there are multiple more, but, you know, every port, and there are hundreds of ports in the world, mm. have, you know, the challenge of how to get uh, legit legitimacy of documentation and a blockchain and smart contracts can actually overcome that problem. So, you know, Morpheus Network, with its contract first uh, with Golftainer, can now demonstrate to other customers that they have the ability to uh, really help uh, customers uh, optimize uh, their, their port, net, port network or their port operation mm -hmm. and make it uh, far more efficient and effective. From the execution of digitalized documents, enhancing how much compliance is followed, and just overall increasing data quality while saving time and capital. And then diving a little further, we can actually find the slides for this presentation that Dan gave at the UN ESCAP conference a couple months back. And so this basically just highlights the operations of Morpheus Network and how they can alleviate some of the tensions and silos within the industry. And one really special piece within these slides is the highlight of their collaboration with Customs Direct, where they actually got to work firsthand with the US Department of Homeland Security. This is a partnership they formed back in late 2018 to early 2019 and is focused on building an automated compliance cross-border platform between Canada and the US. And as we can see here, the process pretty much goes as shown. So the documents and the physical asset that's being shipped gets digitalized onto the Morpheus Network platform. Then as the transport companies interact with customs brokers, the number, hashes, and IDs are then verified automatically with the Department of Homeland Security's databases and gets encrypted back onto the platform with a carrier code and shipment control number before being cleared across the border and delivered to the buyer. There's also some other partnerships they discussed in this presentation, such as with Marsh, SAP, and Federated Co-op, but we've already went over those in the introduction. Now additionally, they've also collaborated with Sinasa, which is the official government certified food safety and quality service within Argentina. And what they plan to do with this partnership is integrate Morpheus Network for things like animal management and certifications of different products using IoT and blockchain. A lot of what this partnership will bring towards Argentina's food and quality services are revolved around things like 
certifying plant and animal products and tracing their point of origins, controlling and tracking diseases and plagues that could affect these animals and plants, and of course certifying that the products are at product standards. And of course we know that anytime there's a government that's backing and utilizing your DLT project, you're probably in pretty good hands in regard to your technology gaining some form of real adoption. And while I'd argue the food safety and quality services sector is a pretty vital sector in any economy, and we really don't see many DLT projects that are building in this department quite yet. Now along with this they actually have some more ties to Argentina, as they had also partnered with Vitalcan, which is mainly a pet food company. And what they're doing is regulating and automating processes of phytosanitary certification. The current problem within their operations is that once a package is sent out, even if they detect an issue, it has to wait till it hits the destination point before it can get sent back for recall. This is obviously ridiculously time and capital consuming for both sides. And that's what we get for having such a fragmented and siloed supply chain. Now, with Morpheus Network interconnecting every part of the supply chain together, they can easily detect problems that are many times missed by human errors without having to look at reverse logistics and find where and when that one problem took place. But why the focus on Argentina? Aren't they technically a developing country that's been getting pummeled by hyperinflation? Well yes, but in case you guys haven't noticed, many of the countries willing to adopt blockchain and DLT earlier on are some of these less developed countries. I mean just look at Lackchain, that's a whole initiative around connecting Latin America and the Caribbeans to blockchain and DLT. So back to Argentina. The agriculture industry is absolutely massive there, making up about 60% of their GDP. That's about 60 billion dollars annually. Though of course there's still a lot of inefficiencies and costs they could cut to bring that number up. So Vitalcan works fairly closely with Sinasa, and that makes sense when you're distributing pet foods you better make sure you're feeding your pets only the best quality of food. And that doesn't just go for people in Argentina, but even anyone else watching this video with pets. Be sure to take good care of them. So because they work so closely together, it makes sense for them to be using the same platform that connects every other part of the supply chain together to ensure these products will have the same level of provenance all through the way, right? But beyond this, Sinasa officials had actually come out and said that it's in their newly best practice and even an unofficial standard within that subsector of phytosanitary in Argentina to comply by agreeing to leverage Morpheus Network. Maybe I didn't sound quite excited enough there, but you guys have to realize how big this is. Now you've got an entire country with over half their GDP coming from agriculture, not just relying, but almost in a sense mandating and standardizing the Morpheus platform for phytosanitary purposes. And while something tells me that this won't be the only thing that Argentina leverages the Morpheus network platform for a few years down the line. We'll move on to the next line of connections which is with Noah Meppel. So beyond being an amazing developer, he's actually also attended some pretty interesting conferences and events. Just earlier in October of this year, he was a speaker at the Chicago Venture Summit for the future of logistics. This is a venue that works with matching startups to ventures. And so there was a pretty wide variety of speakers at this event. Of course, with Noam Apple being one of them, some other notable names in here would include Lori Lightfoot, who's the mayor of Chicago, Samer Ahmed, the senior trade commission for Canada, Mark Beckham, the Director of Industry Manufacturing at Microsoft, the President, Vice President and Chairs of the World Business Chicago, and Patty Rydell, the Supply Chain Strategy Lead for Accenture. And as we already mentioned, Morpheus does have some connections with Accenture by being in their Supply Chain Innovations Lab. And of course, both of these companies being Anapa members. So very interesting to see both Accenture and Microsoft also presenting here. Now, the last little connection we'll cover will be on another conference, which Dan and Noam actually both attended together in 2019, where they talked about blockchain technology for real-world use cases. So this event was called the Toronto Family Office and High Net Worth Annual Conference. Needless to say, quite a prestigious name. And they basically discuss a variety of things ranging from macroeconomics, legal and taxes, international trends, personal finance, alternative investment routes, mainly commodities, and much more. 
If we look into the lead sponsors for this event, we can tell it's a pretty massive one just based off that we see PwC and Bank of Montreal along with Gluskin Chef which is another wealth management firm. Then in the partners and sponsors, we can actually see Morpheus Network right there. So there was quite a wide array of speakers there, from the president of the Canada-Israel Chamber of Commerce, multiple PwC members such as their national leader for private company services, and multiple members from the Bank of Montreal, along with many other wealth management firms and family offices. So that's some of the general connections for Morpheus Network. As we can see, not only are they working deep within supply chain and digitalization, but they have tons of connections within the financial industry and even some large governmental and standard setting bodies. Now let's talk a little on the M&W token. We've already discussed kind of the operations for the token previously, but just to basically run it back down as a reminder, much like many other networks, the MNW token is used as the fuel for the network, though of course these operations are more enterprise focused when it comes to Morpheus Network, where the main purposes are for things like automation of certain procedures and notarization of documents and data. Additionally, there's also the masternode system within Morpheus Network, and this one works quite unique relative to most node programs, where many times they offer you a straight percentage that usually isn't very sustainable. That's right, I'm looking at you, Strong. Whereas Morpheus Network's masternodes will actually work more so like quants over ledger gateways, where it's actually based on transactional volume within the network, and well, Morpheus Network's nodes will actually be revenue based off of the revenue on their platform. This not only makes it far more sustainable as the rate can vary depending on network activity, but it really just creates an uncapped potential for rewards as you'd have to wonder how much value could potentially flow through their ecosystem if say the global supply chain was all on Morpheus Network. Now of course we're probably quite a ways away from having the whole supply chain on there but even a fractional amount of that value being captured on Morpheus Networks could potentially make these masternodes a great passive income opportunity. Again, not financial advice, but just do a little bit of math for yourself. And beyond all this, you're not going to be verifying data that's very small scale and arguably useless in the grand scheme of things, like whether this person's wallet successfully minted this NFT or whether this wallet has sent their tokens out to an exchange. No, you're going to be verifying supply chain data on the Morpheus platform. And while of course there's very minimal actual human labor to verify and validate, as that's technically done by your computer, it definitely feels good to know you're contributing to something positive and productive versus say running an Ethereum node or Bitcoin node and just verifying mostly retail based peer to peer transactions, if not some smart contracts for retail to mess around with on decentralized applications. One thing I'd be very curious to see moving forward, especially with all of Morpheus Network's connections within the banking sector would be to potentially somehow have the MNW token settle fiat or CBDCs for more of a seamless flow of payments between service providers in that industry, while also just overall being a more agnostic flow of cross-border payments. We've seen networks like Energy Web collaborate with R3 for this, and who knows, maybe we could see Morpheus Network do something similar, as personally, I think this makes sense if you're an industry-focused enterprise grade blockchain project. And while we have heard Dan mention a potential collaboration with Quant down the line for something like interconnecting payment networks and banks. Are there any collaborations with Energy Web or Quant upcoming? Um, great question. Uh, you know, we, we do have a lot of uh, obviously partners, partnerships, integrations. Uh, once again, it goes back to that positioning of middleware. Uh, we are that middleware hub between all these different APIs being pulled into the into the port system. Uh, we're talking the terminal operating system, the transport management system, uh, you know, all these sort of uh, IT systems prior to using a middleware uh, were data silos uh, with manual steps in between it to allow them to communicate. Uh, when it comes to Energy Web or Quant, uh, you know, I, I, to be honest, I don't follow the projects too uh, closely. I see Quant has, has a middleware positioning as well, and I think I've seen some partnerships with banks as well. Uh, so I can see down the road a, a potential uh, maybe payment system integration. Uh, Energy Web, I'd have to learn more about what, what they're doing as well. Um, I, you know, to me, that sounds like it's connected with sustainability. Uh, obviously, we have a, a carbon emission calculator 
calculator that we use. Uh, we have some different solutions for carbon offset as well. Uh, so I'd love to learn more about what they're doing. And if it makes sense to integrate uh, technologies with what we're doing, uh, then I'm all for it, obviously. So I think this is definitely right up that alley and something that Quant's Overledger could most definitely pull off. And so in case anyone forgot, the current circulating supply of the MNW token is at 37 million and 520,000 with a total supply of 47 million 897,000 and 218 MNW that'll ever be in existence. So it's about 78 to 80% in full circulation relative to the fully diluted supply. That in my eyes is pretty darn good relative to most other projects out there where we often see things like 50% total distribution or at times even as little as 10 to 20%. But that's about all we've got for the Morpheus Network Deep Dive. Congrats if you made it through the entire rabbit hole. I know sometimes these topics diving into certain projects can get kind of boring at times, but trust me, the knowledge you gain will definitely be worth it down the line. And now to just wrap it up with my final thoughts. Overall, Morpheus Network is a super simplistic yet unique solution for everything in the supply chain ecosystem. To have a tech agnostic network that's able to interoperate all the data and platform silos currently within the, the industry to even bridging the traditional world of supply chains to the new innovative solutions brought by blockchain technology is not only a very useful tool to have going forwards as blockchain adoption just continues to grow in various industries, it also makes it a super attractive solution relative to many other supply chain based blockchain solutions out there. Because now you don't have to completely overhaul and rebuild your entire stack. Because you're saying goodbye to the legacy framework you've spent so much time and money building just to restart on blockchain technology. But instead you just migrate your current modules into the Morpheus network platform making it not only much more of a simple integration but it also saves so much more on time, money, and just much less of a learning curve. I would argue the pros heavily outweigh the cons in this situation, where the only con you really have is that while there is that agnostic feature to them, there's probably going to still be a slight bit of a learning curve during the initial phases in addition to the cost of integration. But the pros are that you save infinitely more time, capital, and errors within the plethora of procedures such as human-made errors or lost counterparts in the supply chain, thanks to their platform digitalizing and notarizing everything in that sector, creating a perfect digital twin of every little step that happens through the process. Additionally, their ability to have a seamless flow of payments with their token for various services on there, but also having connections to Swift and many other large banks makes for a perfect hybrid solution of both fiat and DLT networks for payment railways. And while having masternodes that give out a revenue based APY within their supply chain aggregation platform does sound pretty attractive to say the least. Not just for retail investors but even for corporations that are in the sector will probably want to set some nodes up to verify their own and others logistic data while getting a reward doing so. Their team's experience is obviously extremely re relevant to everything that they do, from Dan's experience working at some of the highest levels in the supply chain industry for a number of years now, and of course those connections to standard setting members in supply chain like the ISCEA's IISB and the various United Nations industries he's been working with. Then of course just seeing Roger was the CEO of DHL for 13 years should say enough, let alone all the other positions he's held and is currently even holding. And then there's Noel Meppel, who's built up a ton of connections to countless different industries during his time with web development at Colab and his startup Green Forest Solutions. Overall, I personally feel like this is a very well thought out and planned project from people that are not just experienced, but truly passionate about the growth and sustainability of our supply chain system. Of course, this is a pretty large market with multiple projects building with a similar initiative to disrupt supply chains. But Morpheus Network has been the first I've seen to do so in an agnostic manner that doesn't lock a company into using one specific network. Alright, but that's about it for the Morpheus Network deep dive. I know we skipped out on a couple partnerships like with Golf Tainer and some more on the ISCA and some more with a few other corporations they've been in talks or collaborated with. 
but we've covered many of those in our introduction. And I really wanted to focus on some of the more recent activities in addition to the big standards that they're connected to that might be a little less known. And if you are still hungry for more fundamental focused blockchain content, be sure to check out tokenizer.network for all my content platforms in one spot, for my Twitter threads, Medium articles, Spotify podcasts, and much more. Of course, that'll be linked right down in the description below as usual. But as always, I hope everyone got something good out of this video, whatever it may be. And of course, be sure to stay safe and keep learning. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.